Welcome to Double Fries No Slaw. It is Sunday, July 31st, last day of July. Hey, tomorrow is August and there's football in August. Richie, hope it's been a good weekend for you. How you doing? Yeah, it's been a great weekend. You know, talked last week. I had to do a little go live all week at work. So t- took a half day Friday, got to play a little golf. Um, take it, took it pretty easy the weekend for the most part, just, you know, trying to do what everyone else is doing, keeping up with these updates from Florida State's camp because practice has officially begun. Yeah, I mean, it's I I vote for a couple of reasons. I well, okay, I'm gonna come back on this real quick, but I vote for a week zero game every year. Yeah, like that's what I want. Now, saying that it's the weekend of my daughter's birthday party every year, so maybe I don't vote for that. But I like it because it's a free win. I like it because you start fall practice a week early. You you're you're essentially going to get more practices than everyone else this year. Um, because the way it works out, no, not a ton more, like three or four more, but I'm with that. Um, you get an extra buy shoveled in there. We talked about this on spaces the other day when we talk about the schedule a little bit later, I think that Florida state schedule sets up really, really nicely because of the extra buy. And so, yeah, I'm all about it again. It being my daughter's birthday weekend every year, that's going to be tough, but you know, she's only gonna be, you know, whatever. She'll be fine. I'm taking her to the game for her birthday. So talking about that, we'll get into the show. Um, if you're going to the Duquesne game and you don't have a tailgate, we're not doing anything official. Like it's not a big podcast tailgate or with the roll up or anything like that. I mean, I'll bring you some Gramco gummies if you guys want them, but I really just kind of want a place to land and, uh, and I want to be close to the stadium. So, you know, where we tailgated for the Duquesne game or for the spring game, you know, where we tailgate for Notre Dame, we're going to tailgate there. If you have questions, you can DM the pod. You can message us here on YouTube. You can find us anywhere, you know, TJ, double fries, no slaw.com, whatever, We'll hook you up and, and come crash the tailgate. It's not going to be anything crazy, nothing official, but we'll have a spot. You can come say hello. Not going to get real wild. I'll have my four-year-old there, but if, if Harlan wants to get wild or anybody else does, that's on you. But, um, yeah, we'll we'll have some Guthrie's there. We'll hang out. Taking my daughter to the game and just want to have somewhere kind of close to the stadium for us to be able to sit, have a little shade, have some nice, nicer bathrooms around there and stuff like that. So if you're going to the Duquesne game and need a tailgate, um, hit us up. Also, if you're going to LSU and you don't have a tailgate, this one is official. Um, you can go to uh, rollupnetwork.com, uh, hit the merch tab, and then right there you'll see tickets to the uh, New Orleans tailgate. And we'll be hanging out in New Orleans on Bourbon Street that weekend, and we'll be throwing a big, big tailgate. I think we sold like 20 or some tickets this week, so there are going to be a ton of people there. Um, we've sold a couple dozen tickets every week, so make sure you don't miss out on yours. Uh, free food, free liquor. Private bathroom, shade out there in the middle of um, New Orleans. You're, you're going to want that. You're going to need that. So come hang out with us in New Orleans um, at the tailgate. Last thing, last announcement I have, then we'll get into the show real quick. If you're watching, if you're listening on replay, whatever, hit the uh, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. But we will be in Tampa this weekend. So it feels like we have something every single weekend. But we'll be in Tampa for the Tampa Bay Seminoles Club pub crawl. Um We'll be doing a live show at Carmine's. If you're a booster, they're having a booster-only event there at Carmine's. Should be a ton of fun. And then you guys know the Tampa Book Pub Crawl is one of the absolute best in all the nation when it comes to attendance. They've always got thousands and thousands of people there hanging out. FSU fans kind of take over Ybor City. So you can go to tampanoles.com. You can get your tickets to the to the pub crawl. You don't need tickets necessarily to the, uh, to the live show that we're going to be doing they're at Carmine's, but if you do go to the pub crawl, you can use Double Fries 10 to save 10% on that. Um, Double Fries No Slaw brought to you by Guthrie's in Tallahassee. You can visit both their locations, 1818 West Tennessee and 2550 North Monroe. I told you guys last week, I stopped in and got a couple of gut boxes for the fam. So good stuff. Appreciate Guthrie's, appreciate their support. And uh, they'll be they'll be on at both tailgates, both the uh, Duquesne one and the LSU one. So, all right, let's jump into it, Richie. Now that we've done five minutes of announcements, hit the share button, hit the subscribe button, guys. We really appreciate that. Um, shoot us a comment if you have any questions. You want to talk anything about practice? We're going to talk about Seminole Showcase. We're going to talk about FSU schedule. Um, we're not going to predict wins and losses today, but we are going to rank it. How we kind of see where the more difficult games are, where the easier ones are, where where that looks like, and what that looks like. Um, Talk about a commit this week and get to know a bunch of stuff. But if you have questions, if you have comments, or if you just want to give us a go Knowles, the comments and the likes and everything really do help the uh, the algorithms, and we would appreciate it. Um, Richie, let's jump into it. Fall camp is here. 
and we are underway. Um, started on Tuesday, they had a report. Wednesday, we um, they actually started practice. They had an off day yesterday because of the camp, but they've uh, back at it today right now. Um, actually, the, the photo that's behind me is uh, from the FSU football account. I tweeted that this morning. Really, really good look at the uh, uh, practice field. Beautiful Doak Campbell Stadium sitting there behind it, and we're less than four weeks away. But Richie, what are your uh, what are your quick takeaways? We don't have to spend all morning on practice, but uh, what are your quick takeaways with uh, fall camp so far? Yeah, I mean it's about what we expected, right? They haven't been in full pads yet, so it's really hard to take much away from it right now. But you know, it, it definitely sounds like there's some flashes, um, and you know, unfortunately, some inconsistency issues, especially on the offensive side right now. Um, I do like what I'm hearing from Jordan Travis, the throws he's making, the confidence he's kind of showing out there. Uh, his receivers aren't helping him out a whole lot, but it does sound like that there's definitely some flashes, right? Johnny Wilson uh, made a phenomenal grab. You know, Malik McLean, that sounds like he might be our, our wide receiver one. Um, you know, Micah Pittman, we're excited about him, obviously. See what Deuce Span can do. Winston Wright is out there, not overly active, but the fact that he's out there for the, the start of camp alone is awesome. Uh, and I'm TJ, I'm getting really excited about this defense. The, the more I hear about them, the more I look into it. Um, being the third year in this program with all the veteran leadership they have, I'm really excited about this defense, especially that secondary. Um, AZ Thomas sounded like he had a phenomenal practice this morning. I, I know you had shared some uh, numbers that I think someone from the Democrat put out. But again, tough to take away a whole lot when they're just, you know, seven on sevens, one on ones. Uh, in shells, but when the pads come on, I think uh, Harlan was telling us Tuesday that the pads come on for good. That's when we get to start separating the men from the boys and see who's who's ready for football this year. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, I think that we're going to get into it. I don't want to. I don't want to sneak preview our. Uh, oh man, I love that cup. I can't believe you drink out of that cup. For those listening and not watching, that's the national championship cup from past. It. Like I have mine, like in bubble wrap and store away. Like six so, of these things. So. Oh my goodness, no! I just I can't risk. Uh, I actually needed when I took a picture of the Oyster City beer that I had the other day. I I pulled out the national championship club to put it in, and then I immediately like dumped that into another cup <laughs> and put that back. I washed it and put it back up. I'm Drip, so protective over this uh, that's BCS stuff. So if you're listening, Richie's drinking the 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 giveaway cup or not the giveaway, but if you bought a soda out there in Pasadena oh. for the Auburn game, so um, it just triggered me when I saw that. So. <laughs> Yeah, but I don't want to give away our bold predictions for later. But, yeah, I'm loving the defense. I, I got two bold predictions for on offense and then one for defense. I'm sure we'll have those kind of all, all offseason and all of those things. But, uh, yeah, I, I'm very excited for the defense. Sounds like Jared Verse is absolutely living up to the hype. And had a, he also had a really, really good day. Azariah Thomas, who I think is, is going to be our, our best freshman this year, um, really, really good day there. Um, a couple of interceptions. What dropped another pick six, so you know, got the pass break up there. I mean, we don't like dropped interceptions a ton, but uh, that was from Carter Kells of the Democrat. Carter, of course, the Carter as well, Carroll right? of the Democrat. I'm sorry, of course, the fumble as well. It sounds like he was doing it all today, yeah. Really, really nice practice from him. And then, like you said, the offensive line, uh, defense is kind of taking it to him at times. You know, it sounds like I, it. You're not super surprised by that. You know, defenses typically start out a little faster. And so that's why I, I, I don't worry so much about the wide receiver stuff. Now, I think if we get to week three of camp and, and we're still hearing that the wide receivers are really struggling, I, I think that's when you maybe get a little bit more concerned. Um, but, yeah, I, I like what we're hearing out of camp. I like that Jordan has just absolutely taken the reins. Um, I don't know that we necessarily expected anything different there. But um, Benson having a really nice couple of days so far. But I, I'm ready for what Harlan say Wednesday when the when the pads come on and these guys start hitting and we really see you know what what the team has and, and what's going on there. You know by the end of this week there will there will only be three weeks left, right? And so there will only be two weeks left of camp and a, a week of game prep before Duquesne. So it's coming quickly. I'm excited for it. We've got a bunch of fun content over the next couple of weeks that we're going to do. Uh, I think we're bringing back the panel next week, and so we'll we'll have a lot of good stuff coming, and we'll kind of keep you updated on camp. Um, again, really, really early, so don't want to don't want to spend half an hour talking about guys running around in shorts and stuff. But there are great videos from the guys covering it. Again, Carter Carroll's 
from the Democrat. Brendan Sinone's doing a good job. Zach Blostein's out there. I saw Brett Nevitt from 247's out there. Um, ben from Tomahawk Nation. We'll try and give some love and some shout-outs to guys that are out there doing a good job. So follow those guys on Twitter. Follow those guys on social media, and you'll see some of the highlights that are put out. I also really, really, really love, and not just because we had him on the show, but I love what Jeff Colhane is doing with the guys after each practice. Quick two-minute um, interviews, videos, takeaways uh, from guys that maybe had a good day or guys that just they just already had kind of set up, pre-scheduled to uh, to roll with. But I really enjoy that, right? You know, we talked about Jeff's going to be doing some different stuff. So you can follow the FSU football account on Twitter. It's just at FSU football um, and see some of those interviews that Jeff's putting out, which are really, really neat. Again, a different kind of lane than, than what Gene was in. But I, I was I'm, I'm really liking the uh, the interviews there after practice. Yeah, no, it's. I saw he did the one with Caitlin Deloach. I thought that was um, phenomenal. I, I'm really excited for Caitlin Deloach. So shout out to him, um, and obviously Tatum Bethune. I, I think you know that second level of the defense might be pretty exciting to watch as well. Um, a lot of good stuff going on. I, I appreciate the shout out, Michael. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, I'm excited. Like we just mentioned, you know, this week when the pads come on in. The, what I love about Coach Norvell and the media loves this is they, they let the media come watch pretty much every practice. Now, they're going to be locked out of the scrimmages, and they are limited in what they can share. They're not going to come on here and say, oh, someone went down with a knee injury or something. But you can get a lot of good insight from, the, like you mentioned, the guys that are out there every day, whether it's Tom Hawk Nation 247. Um, but, yeah, the Jeff Colhane videos, I, I love those. And I'm impressed with, for my man being out there in a button-down shirt and khaki pants in the, like, 100-degree uh you know, heat index because I, when I played golf on um, Friday afternoon, it was brutally hot. And I'm just thinking, man, these guys are in pads playing football in Tallahassee right now. Yeah. They're not drinking a beer every other hole. So they, they have it rough. Um, you know, July in, in Tallahassee, any freshman who's been there, they've been up there at this time of the year, it can be brutal. So, you know, the, the key thing so far is, you know, knock on woods, uh, just want an injury free camp, right? You know, the Bucks got some terrible news um, with Ryan Jensen going down in, in shorts, right? And that's the kind of stuff you want to avoid because I do think this team is ready. You know, they've been in the system, they know what to expect. I think Mike Norvell said it, it was the most he's ever been able to install on the first day of camp. Uh, so again, that continuity year over year, it's why you kind of want to keep the coaches here, um, at least the ones that are doing their job because it, that only pays off year over year. Um, but yeah, excited to to see what happens this week when the pads come on. I want to give a quick shout out as we wrap up fall camp um, talk, and then we're, we got about a million questions on recruiting in the chat. So if you have other questions, we're going to kind of get to the recruiting side of things next. Um, do want to give a quick shout out to Gramco. Gramco is your Delta 8 leader, and they'll supply all of your Delta 8 needs. Everything from their quick mix, which the Kush House had an event last night, and I heard they were making some Quick mix drinks, so that's definitely dangerous, but hashtag know your dose. Um, everything from gummies to hard candy, which the, the hard candy um, slap a little bit harder than those gummies do. Um, wake and bake coffee, which Richie had some of this morning, and I've got just a little bit left in, in my cup. You can't see me because of the background, but yeah, there we go. Um, hard candy, gummies, wake and, break, wake and bake coffee, pre-rolls, whatever you need, it's at thegramco.com use code dfns25 to get 25 percent off um i would say it's a money back guarantee but if you just don't like it then just let me know and i'll and i'll hook you up with something else right like you don't get your money back but like just go to gramco go support um absolutely the best in the market founded by fsu fans now alums um david robin all the folks over there at gramco do such a great job um products are made and grown in florida no medical card is needed. You must be 21 or older to order. TheGramCo.com, DFNS25 uh, at checkout. All right, recruiting talk. We'll start with this, and then we'll move on. We talked a ton about Brock Glenn. Um, Brock Glenn picks, F, uh, picks Ohio State over FSU. Seemed a lot like Florida State was in the pole position for this recruitment at the, you know, I don't want to say the 11th hour, but maybe the 10th hour. Sounded like the Ohio State offer that he had became committable. Um, as Ohio State, I don't know if they're, missing on their number one target or if they just end up not getting him or one of the backup or what, but his offer was committable. Florida state misses and the kid picks Ohio state yesterday at 4 PM. Um, not, I don't think super shocking. I think it's yeah. Andre, I'm working on that Graham coast strawberry lemonade. That's that's next up because yeah, I'll, I'll never stop eating gummies once those hit, but yeah, I, I don't know that it's super shocking. I think it's disappointing because I think we thought, that Florida State had that commitment pretty close to locked up. I think your, most of your national guys thought that. Most of your local guys thought that. 
Most of your regional guys that covered other teams thought that. And then when Ohio State comes in at the last minute, things like that happen. And I think when you look at where we are in recruiting and when you look at where other teams are in recruiting, we haven't put together a winning season in four years. You know, I don't think it's super shocking that we lose out to an Ohio State. Now, if, they, if, a, a, if a recruit that we prioritize this much would have picked a Mississippi State or picked a Kentucky or picked a Texas Christian or picked a Vandy or South Carolina or NC State or something like that, I think that would – that would upset me a lot more. Uh, losing a battle to Ohio State, I think you just shrug your shoulders and say it is what it is, right? Like I, you look at a team that's recruiting really re- well right now in Miami. When Miami loses a battle to Alabama, I don't think that they're like pulling their hair out and flipping out. I mean, I think there's just a pecking order to things. And Florida State is not the Florida State of the mid two thousands or of the nineties, and they've got to get back there. So uh, it's frustrating to lose out on them. Florida State will then turn to another couple of options and kind of see what they can make happen um but yeah it's frustrating you know i will say this on the uh, i'll bring the chris parson thing in and i'll let richie kind of share any thoughts uh florida state i think take a took a calculated risk with chris parson um understanding that they might lose him and they were okay with that they thought the the risk reward the payoff for potentially getting brock lynn outweighed the risk of losing chris parson uh, i don't think they would have done anything differently i think that they put all their eggs in one basket um and they're comfortable with the result. They'll now kind of turn their attention to a kid named Kaysen Wiseman, as well as another one uh, named Ryan Brown, who were both at the Seminole Showcase this weekend, which we'll talk about here in a moment. Um, and I would expect that, in, you know, somebody asked if if there was a potential offer going out anywhere um, there. You can see some highlight videos uh, of those guys throwing and stuff. Uh, to my knowledge, there haven't been any offers that have gone out just yet. I would not be shocked if either one of those got offered by the end of this camp. Um, trying to take too much away from practice videos uh, at, a, at a showcase event like that. But we'll see if Florida State offers and, and if one of those guys picks the Knowles. But frustrating that, that Glenn picks Ohio State. But, again, I don't think super shocking. Yeah, it's uh, just an unfortunate reminder, Colin, kind of like you said, where Florida State is on the totem pole right now, right? We're not top tier. This isn't Jimbo Fisher selling three straight first-round picks at quarterback. You know, So it, it's unfortunate. Um, it sounds like – Glenn was, you know, would have been happy at Florida State, but kind of was waiting for that green light from Ohio State. And look, what does Ohio State do? They put receivers in the league every single year. They always have a great offensive line. Uh, Brian Day has a great offense. So it's not a shock to see a quarterback want to go to Ohio State um, because uh, the negative pitch is easy. Listen, Florida State, they've put two guys in the NFL in the past 10 years at receiver. You want to go throw to those guys? Or do you want to throw to the guys that we have here? And they're, they're going to have one of the best receiver, receiving classes in the country as well coming in. Um, the unfortunate thing for Florida State, Ohio State really wanted the Baylor commit. I forget his name right now. Um, they've been working to flip him for the past you know six, eight weeks. They thought they could. I think they finally realized that wasn't going to happen. And that's probably why Brock Lynn got the green light uh, from an optic standpoint. It's just a really bad look for Florida state because it, you know, it's from the outsiders. Like you look at it and say, Oh, they, they let him go because they were so sure they're getting this Glenn guy. Now they have nobody. Yeah. That's a bad look. Um, you know, we talked to, or TJ mentioned, we had two guys here that, that may get some offers from Florida state that are going to get some looks. Um, and unfortunately Florida state has to move on to play and see now at the quarterback position, you know, when not all recruiting is, uh, down right now, but the quarterback one, it just seems like year after year going from, you know, Sam Howell to Luke Altmaier, the, the Parson situation. We thought we had Glenn, just, just not a lot of luck on the, at the QB position on the trail lately. Yeah. There's just so many, there's just such a stark difference in what your options become once you miss once or twice in, in QB yeah. recruiting, right. And wide receiver and offensive line. And I mean, there's a, a lot of those kids out there, right? Like every team has yeah. 10 offensive linemen and two or three quarterbacks. Right. And so, there's just a sheer numbers issue there. And so Florida state, I don't even think they've really, I think it's been pretty similar everywhere. They've had to go to like plan B's and C's at other places, but there's so much more talent. Um, and it's so much more noticeable when it's your QB and it's your bell cow and, um, things like that. So frustrating, but we move on and, and, you know, maybe one of those other guys can come in. I don't see either one of those other guys being a factor for a couple of years, even if they do commit and end up signing with Florida state. I don't think that they're, Guys, they're going to come in and challenge AJ for the job or anything like that next year, which I do think maybe I'm going on record now saying that I think AJ takes the job next year. But um, yeah, I, I 
think you need quarterbacks, and Florida State will probably have to take one of these two guys, which is, again, a kind of a plan C-ish option. Um, I do wonder if they'll stay kind of in the Brock Glenn uh, recruitment, if they'll kind of just wash their hands of that and move on, or if they'll kind of stay on him, um, see what Ohio State does this year, see if Florida State can get some positive uh, momentum recruiting this year and uh, potentially try and flip that or not. You know, I don't know. I, I haven't really heard one way or the other there. Um, but if Ohio State was to pick up another big quarterback, would would Glenn be maybe open to moving there? I'm not sure. Um, you'd certainly take his commitment if, if he came to you in the middle, middle of December and said, like, hey, I do want to sign with you, but I do wonder how much Florida State will stay on him or not. But we'll kind of see. I think Florida State will also have to take a transfer wider, uh, t- transfer quarterback at this point. Um, when you go into next year, you're, you know, it, it is very tough to put all your eggs into the one basket of A.J. Duffy. Not that I don't think he's capable. I think that time will tell on that. But I, I do worry a little bit just about health and saying, you know, keeping a guy healthy, What what's your backup situation? So I wouldn't be shocked if they go after a transfer in the offseason upcoming, you know, this year. So um, I think you have to at this point. Yeah, I think, it, it you know, you probably needed one at the end of fall this or at the end of the spring this year, but just not a lot of guys. I think that Florida State was ready to go after or pull the trigger, you know, less talent out there. But I think there'll be some guys, you know, that hit the portal after this year, guys that made it to different places and didn't see playing time and, and do want to kind of like uh, move around and, and have a chance to play. And I think Florida State will have that opportunity for sure this year, at least compete for a job. So, okay, Seminole Showcase this weekend. Um, that's been pretty good. That's been pretty fun to watch. Somebody actually had a question about it, and we'll talk about some of these things um, when you guys get into it. Um, Blake asked, how many commitments do you think we get in the next week from this event? Another one, Van Lyle Storing Tell. I'm glad that we secured the service of a four-star DB for 2024. However, is it it is a disappointment that I haven't gotten verbal commitments from a 2023 player yet? Is this a reason for concern? So I'll answer Van Lyle's first, and then we'll kind of move on and talk about some stuff. I don't think so. I think the staff does a really, really good job of not pressuring kids into committing for optics. Um, they do a good job of not pressuring kids into – making a decision for hype or narrative or anything like that. I think that they do their very best job to develop relationships. And it really does. I think we all know, or we all assume that that Blake Nicholson is going to come in, right? Four-star linebacker out of California. I think we all assume that. Does it really matter if he commits today versus on Tuesday when he's back home? Like, I don't, I don't know that that really makes a huge difference. Um, I think the the staff does, like I said, a really, really good job um, of not pressuring kids, focusing on developing relationships. And I think they're out there having a really good time at, at the camp this week. Uh, a lot of them are out at practice. A lot of them have been on campus for a few days now. And I don't think the staff is just in their ear bugging them. Hey, let's let's commit right now. Let's commit right now. I do think you could see some stuff happen this afternoon. I do think that as the camp winds down, as guys are leaving, as you're having some of those exit type interviews and chatting with the staff, I do think you could see some stuff happen. I think you could see some offers go out. Um, there's a, a four-star running back that's currently committed to um, Utah. I think it's Mike Mitchell, if I'm not mistaken there. Um, you could see an offer go out to one of these quarterbacks that we've talked about. And so I think if those things were to happen, uh, I think you you could see some uh, – some commitments, but yeah, I, I'm sorry. It's yeah, it's Michael Mitchell. Yeah, I was right. Um, I think you could see some commitments there, but no, I'm I'm not worried about anything with that. I fully expect Blake Nicholson to still commit to Florida State. I expect uh, if Florida State offers that four star running back um, out of Middleburg, Florida, his name's again Michael Mitchell. He's currently committed to Utah. I think that he would commit to Florida State. I think if they offer either one of those quarterbacks, they'll commit. And then you have four commits in a weekend, and and we're not worried about it at all, right? But for, from a couple of reasons, I think the staff wants to be sure before making an offer. I also think they want the kids to be sure, and they don't pressure them into it. So, Richie, I don't know if you have a take there or not. If you're concerned, I know that we see what our rivals do, and Florida's out here picking up like three or four commits. It reminds me very much of, and I'm not comparing these coaches, but it reminds me very much of Willie Taggart's first year. They Florida is taking advantage of that new car smell and that new coach smell right now. And there's a lot of excitement. There's a lot of buzz. I'm not saying that they're pressuring kids into committing or anything like that, but I – think that 
sometimes when you are a newer staff, you try and grab anybody you can. And it was very similar to, to kind of how Willie recruited. Willie had a lot of positive momentum um, in recruiting his first year. And I think that's what's going to happen when you're a new coach. And I think when you've been here a couple of years, kids really want to know that they're committing to a place. And like I said, I don't think the staff pressures them into it. So Richie thoughts on thoughts on that. Are you concerned there at all? Or what do you, what do you think? No, I'm not concerned at all. Um, and it was, it's always exciting when you have a recruiting event and you get, you know, two or three big commits. Um, I'm almost more of a fan of the kids waiting until, you know, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday after a visit, let that visit high wear off. Uh, Cause a lot of times you see kids, they have a great time out of camp. They're caught up in the moment they commit. Then they get home and they're not as sure about things and they're planning for their official visits. So uh, again, I I don't want any kid committing if they're not 100% sure. And listen, kids will still change their mind. They're still going to be flipped. So it, that's recruiting. Um, but I think it means more to get that commitment, you know, on the Tuesday or Wednesday after the visit, because that means they went home, you know, talk, talk it over with their family and made the decision from there. But again, I'm not going to be upset if um, uh, if Blake ends up committing to Florida State this afternoon either. Uh, that's a big time get if it does happen. Yeah. So based on everything I've seen, I I don't necessarily expect Blake to um, commit before leaving. I, you know, Eliezer here asked about it. I, I believe he said that he wants to commit in August. We're really close to that. So again, I I could see Blake potentially pulling the trigger here, but I think it could be in the next week or so. Would would kind of be where I lean there. Um, Zach Blostein of Knowles 247 put out a recruiting scoop about two hours ago. If you're on the message boards, if you're over there, that'd be a really, really good place to go and, and get really in depth on all of these guys, um, that are on campus that we're talking about offers that we're talking about commitments. That'd be a really good place to, to go, um, get more info. Um, I'm not going to go through every single thing that he said just report on his information there are some guys that kind of intrigue me that i think florida state is in good positions for i really like where florida state stands for blake nicholson i like where um florida state stands for um that mitchell that michael mitchell kid if they do offer him uh i like the jacksonville uh defensive back for uh kenton kirkland um and then i think you have some other guys that you know, are maybe not as big of names, but if Florida State was to offer one of those quarterbacks, I think that they would end up, one of them would end up committing. Um, Hakeem Williams is the big name that's on Florida State's campus right now, five-star wide receiver. We've done all this recruiting talk and not talked about him at all. Um, that's a recruitment that I think Florida State is going to go down to the absolute wire with. And, uh, man, if they, can, if they can land a kid like that, then it really says that they, you know, that's obviously the gem of the class if, if they're able to get him. Uh, it's all about kind of getting him back on campus for, for an official visit. Um, and so if Florida State can get him on for an official visit, um, I think that would be absolutely massive. And, uh, and you know, fingers crossed there that that ends up happening. Um, Timmy asked, what are your thoughts about the Jacksonville State defense, Jacksonville State defensive back transfer being on campus? I actually chatted with Brendan Sinone on him the other day. Again, this is secondhand information. I don't watch these kids at practice. I don't cover, I don't watch their film. I don't cover this. Um, I I do like um where Florida State stands there. It, you know, if his offer is committable, I, I you know, he's been on campus this weekend. Brendan really likes him. There's a lot of room for for guys to play um in that secondary, in that defensive back. Um, field and uh, you know I don't know that he comes in here and just makes a um, I don't even know if he's one of your top four or five guys but I do think he gets a lot of burn he gets in a ton and I, I like that pickup if Florida State can go out and get him I think he graduates soon or he just graduated um, I think August 3rd he graduates yeah and so once once that happens I, you know he can kind of enroll and, and get in uh, as a grad transfer and play right away. So yeah, I, I like where they're at with Malik Feaster. That's a good question for sure. Um, again, I don't know that that's going to just absolutely go crazy moving the needle, but I, I think that that would be a, a, a good pickup for FSU for sure. Uh, Richie, I just went through a ton of recruiting stuff. We don't typically go that deep into recruiting, but uh, any thoughts on anything I've said, anything I've missed, anything I've left out? Hakeem. Okay. Let me, before you go, sorry, I just cut you off. Carson Scott says, Hakeem said he wants to be back at FSU for the FSU UF game. That'd be huge. Not only because we're going to be there, uh, but because uh, I think later in the season is a good thing, right? If that visit happens, it means you're in his recruitment 
until late November. And signing day is just a few weeks away for that. So if he visits for, I don't know. I mean, no, I don't think they're doing huge official visits here. But if they're if the official visit for like the Duquesne game, right? And then you know we're six and five at some point. Like I don't know if you stay in that recruitment. But visiting late means that he would kind of stay in you. He could stay in his recruitment until the bitter end. And so yeah, I think that'd be huge. I don't know if that's scheduled or not. I'm sure, Zach has an update again. Go to knowles 247com and and you'll see that. But yeah, that'd be a huge visit weekend for sure. Friday night, you know that's going to be a night game, and you're playing a, uh, a a not very good Florida team. So you know, always good for the kid to see a win too. Yeah, and I think the fact that he was on campus this week that's big, right? Because everyone was having big recruiting events. Um, Texas Texas A and M would have loved to have him there. You know, Miami would have loved to have him down there. Alabama would have loved to have him up there. So the fact that he did come here shows that there is some genuine interest. And again, it was unofficial, so he came here on his own dime. Granted, it's not a far trip for him, but but it's a big deal. I'm um, excited about that. Uh, you mentioned Michael Mitchell, the four-star running back committed to Utah. Uh, y'all go check out the Roll-Up Varsity. It's a recruiting pod for the affiliate. Mitchell was actually on that podcast, talked about how Florida State is his dream school. So you, you have to think if that offer comes, you know, it's not often you have a recruit committed somewhere openly saying, yeah, but this is my dream school. So I, I think that's great news for Florida State if they decide they do want to get into that recruitment and offer him. So we'll kind of keep you guys updated. Um, if if anything happens today, which you know very well could have a, a commit or two today, we'll, we'll kind of keep an eye on it and, and keep you updated. Uh, I'll either jump, we'll either jump back on here or just jump on Spaces. So you can go to um, Twitter.com and you can just search the hashtag FSU Spaces and, and you'll find it. So that'll be fun. We'll enjoy that. Hey, if you're watching, if you're listening right now, uh, dozens of people in the chat. So we appreciate that. If you have other questions, hit them up and we'll kind of continue on. Um, do, 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 do. do me a favor, swipe down in the chat if you're on mobile and hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. I think the YouTube stats are that like 80% of people that watch videos or listen to these things are like unsubscribed. So if you just hit the subscribe button, you'll know every time we go live, anytime we have any kind of uh, uh, content coming out. So again, swipe down. We made it up over 800 subscribers. It'd be cool if we could get that up to like 825, 850 by the end of the week. So again, swipe down, hit the subscribe button, like the video if you don't mind. And, uh, and we'll kind of go from there. Um, I did do the final installment of the softball series on Wednesday night. That was a ton of fun. Kaylee Mudge, Sydney Sherrill, Devin Flaherty, and Catherine Sandercock. A lot of fun to watch them win the ACC championship. You can scroll back on our page and check that out. You can also donate to the Rising Spear team-specific sports campaigns. Certainly would encourage you to do that. Obviously, if you want your money to go to football, just donate to the general risingspear.com fund on the front page. They got a new website and everything's kind of motoring along there they've made a couple of hires internally so glad to see that fsu's nil efforts are picking up and doing well uh also we'll g- jump into this i think richie and i have a couple more segments and we'll kind of get going um but before we get to that i want to talk a little bit about a recruit that florida state picked up i also want to give some shout outs to garnet and gold but 2024 four-star db cj heard out of the atlanta area it did kind of get alluded to earlier in the chat commits to Florida State. C.J. Hurd did not have Florida State in his top seven when he released it a few weeks ago. Florida State fans had a meltdown, said that 2024 recruiting was over. Um, Lo and behold, this kid who FSU was his dream school ends up committing to the Knowles. And Florida State has the number two 2024 class, which I think kind of echoes the point that I've made. If Florida State can find a way to get to eight or nine wins this year, I think that with a successful year on the field next year, they can be right back where they want to be and have a top 10-ish, 10 to 15 class that's pretty good in 2024. Maybe even be inside of that top 10. If you win eight games this year, nine games, maybe go crazy this this week, um, this year, I'm sorry. Then improve on that the next year. I think you can be really, really good in 2024. Um, but uh, – I liked it. I like that. Uh, I like that pickup. Big, big commitment. Some other guys are tied to that recruitment, and I'm, I'm, I'm with it. Eliezer mentioned he's surprised to see him commit after the top seven release. Um, yeah, Chestnut Checkers. He had a really good video where he, uh, you know, shared the, uh, you know, the Gator outline was starting to come in, and then immediately, like, it flips to him committed. So, uh, a, a, a big pickup there. Obviously, a long way to go until 2024's signing period which would be December of next year. So you've got, what, 16 months to go, but you'd rather have them committed than uncommitted. So a big pickup by the Knowles yesterday for 2024's class. 
Yeah, I, I don't get too excited about 2024 kids, really, even most 2023 kids. But like you said, you'd rather have him than not. Um, but you know the rivals wanted him. He, he could have committed to Florida or Miami. He would have been a take. So, again, it's, it's early. It's a long ways to go. But it's definitely a, a good sign. And I'm certainly not going to complain about having, you know, a top two class, even if we are talking 2024 right now. Oh, man. Shout out Garnet and Gold. Um, you can go to garnetandgold.com and you can use code NOSLAW, N-O-S-L-A-W. They are going to be announcing some NIL athletes in the next couple of weeks. Um, the Nike stuff has come in. Not all of it, but a good amount of the Nike stuff is in, and you can go check that out now. Nike stuff's not cheap, so 15% off when you use code NOSLAW does save you a good amount of money. Fanatics isn't doing that. Alumni Hall's not doing that. Garden Gold supports FSU and its athletes and its students. You should shop at GardenGold.com. Use code NOSLAW. Get everything you need for game day. Get decked out in the best gear. Get everything you need for your tailgates from chairs to tents to just anything you need. Flags, whatever. GardenGold.com. Family owned and operated. Um, Seminole fans, Seminole family. Support them and shop at GardenGold.com today. Um, class number two right now, long ways to go shows you that Norvell has a good future set up if they keep him around. Yeah. I mean, I think that's the big thing, right? Like, I think you have to, you have to recruit. Well, I think the cake is about baked on 2023. I think that you could, you could maybe pick up a guy like Hakeem, maybe improve, but I, I don't really don't see Florida state's class finishing much above 15 to 17 this year. If they go on a crazy run and win 10 games, I, I guess I could see it getting up to like 12 ish. Realistically, I think they win seven to eight games. And so I think their class will be around 17 to 20-ish, right? Not great, not the standard, not where we should be. But if you follow that up with another nine or so wins next year, uh, I, I think that that would be pretty huge. You guys were asking about Nicholson. He's on day four of his visit right now. I've seen that come across the timeline a couple of times. Pretty impressive, again, on his own dime. But uh, four days at, at Florida State seems to be a good thing. It seems like he's probably enjoying his time there. Um, Trey also mentioned something up here. I'll come up here and give him some more love. Uh, just want to thank you. Just want to thank you. Guys. Just wanted you guys to know I'm all black is trying to clown us saying that we had leftovers from our cookout. So I remind him how disgusting that place was that they serve their kids. Yeah. I, I don't think Gators are, should really troll, uh, anything to do with food. Blake also asked how many commitments do you think we get in the next week from this event? Again, I don't want to focus so much on this, this week. I think when you look at targets that are on campus right now, um, in the 2023 class, like I don't want to get too crazy with looking at 24 and 25. I'd say Florida State picked up four to five commits of guys that were on campus. Uh, and if I'm predicting those, I think it's something like, you know, I, I feel good about um, one of the quarterbacks if they offer him. I feel good about the running back if they offer him. I think Blake will end up committing. I think Kirkland, the DB, commits. So there's four right there. They could pick it up another one or two. You'd love if one of those was Hiking Williams or something crazy like that. But, um, yeah, I, I think four or five. I don't know if they happen within the next week, but I do think that from this event they end up happening, right? I, I think that you get guys back on campus from an official visit or wherever, I think that that would be um, pretty big for FSU. Um, Rich, do you have anything else on recruiting? You want to roll into some uh, uh, some schedule rankings? Uh, or what, what do you want to do here? Yeah, I'm pretty good on recruiting now. Again, guys, the folks at 247, they have the largest team covering it. They don't pay us to say it, but we get the bulk of our recruiting information from there because they do offer the best. So, so definitely check those guys out if you haven't. Oh, man. All right. Schedule rankings from easiest to most difficult. All right. This is pretty fun. This is a fun. I don't know what made me think of this the other day. I don't know why I put this together, Richie, but. I wanted to tweet this out really quick, and then I wanted to um, go over it with you, see what you thought. So I'm going to start with mine first. I kind of go back and forth a couple of times. Let me add this to the stream. Uh, pretty easy. Game one. I think the easiest game on our schedule is Duquesne. I think they're easily the worst game, worst team on the schedule. I think if they played our schedule, they'd go 0-12. Um, so... That one's a pretty easy one, right? Nothing too crazy there. Second, we disagree on this, and we'll kind of get into yours in just a second. We'll do both of our first four, and then we'll argue. Uh, I got Louisiana second, and here's why I put them second easiest. I think the timing of that game makes them the second easiest game on the schedule. If that was early, 
I think that that would be a little bit tougher for us. I do think that since the team, if you look at the way the team played toward the end of the last year, really came together, really gelled well, I think Florida State has a tendency to start slow and pull it together at the end. There aren't a lot of like, we, we kind of do the opposite of Miami, right? Like we don't fall asleep at the very end of the year or just put it in a neutral and, and stink. I really think that by that time we'll really be clicking. And I think that that game being in Doak, I like us to win that one pretty handily. Louisiana lost quite a few guys, and they had a good team last year. Obviously, Billy Napier came from there. But I do think that – I think that will be a pretty easy win. I like us by like three or four touchdowns in that game. Like I, I don't think that that's close at all. I've got Georgia Tech next, mostly because that's a home game. Um, when you look at the other teams that kind of make out your, your, your schedules, I, I like Georgia Tech here as the third easiest game. I guess you go back and forth on this or Louisiana, but I, I just think that – the the fact that they're in a power five conference, their trenches will be a little bit better. We always seem to struggle with Georgia Tech, no matter what it is, where it is, who the coach is. Um, but I like them as our third easiest game. And then I've got Syracuse four. Um, having to travel north is kind of crappy. Like I, you know, I don't love that, but I just I think their talent is so low. I think they're gonna finish last in the division. I, I like Syracuse as our fourth easiest game. Uh, let's look at yours real quick and then we will go and uh, talk about it. So you've got Duquesne as well. Yeah, Duquesne, uh, it's going to be the easiest one. And I went with Georgia Tech here. Um, and, uh, you know, you can make an argument for Georgia Tech or Louisiana here. I'm kind of looking at Louisiana as, as kind of a trap game. I, I don't think it's a game Florida State's going to lose. But being, uh, you know, six days before you play Florida, you know, after coming off of that road trip to Syracuse, I, I just think that's – it'll be a little trickier. Again, if, if we're losing any of these – you know, four games, we're in trouble anyway. Yeah, we're um, talking 10th to 11th. We're not like, it's not like Richie's putting Georgia Tech at three. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and then uh, I think we start to differ a little bit here again. I believe I have. Well, Boston. we just flipped these two. Yeah. Yep. So, um, yeah, Boston, Boston College. College. Yeah. So I, I just think I, I know they have a couple players. I just not impressed them as a team. I, I don't think, uh, you know, I would be surprised if they, do not go to a bowl this season. I know they're out of conference makes it much easier than, a, you know, like Florida State's out of conference schedule. Um, I, I just think these are four games that you got to win them all, right? If, if you drop one of these, it's probably a really bad sign for the season. Yeah, I can see you having Boston College over my Syracuse. I, I think Syracuse is a little bit worse of a team. They've got less players, but you're also traveling then. And so BC is at home. Um so I can see the argument there either way. I still like my Syracuse being slightly easier just because yeah. to me it's more about players than location. Um, I think Boston College's quarterback is is much better than Syracuse's, Jerkovic. Um, they also have Zay Flowers, which worries me a little yeah. bit, but you know, nothing, nothing crazy. Again, I, I think you should certainly beat those teams. All right, these are your middle four games. This one shocked me a little bit. We'll we'll stay with you, but you have as our seventh easiest game. Our seventh most difficult game, right? The the fifth easiest. You have Wake Forest here. That shocked me a little bit. Wake Forest is the only team that blew us out last year. Let's talk about that. So uh, I'm just not as high in them as a lot of people. I know that there's a lot of talk about Hartman being back. Um, got some solid receivers. I, I'm just, again, I, I did put, you know, where these games are played uh, on a premium. Um, I think, you know, the uh, at that point, you were what four or five games into the season. You get Wake yeah. Forest at home. You know, obviously they, they were, <laughs> the game was a disaster last year. But if you don't turn the ball over six times, um, you're probably in that game late. So I, I just think it was a total disaster. You know, Jordan Travis doesn't start the game, gets to go in for a series. Uh, you know, I think he was pressing, trying to do too much on that hail mary at the end of the half. Gets himself hurt, knocked out for the rest of that game and the next one. Um, I just think this is a game Florida State should win again. I in the I, I get it. I'm a much lower on Wake Forest than the majority of, of college football fans. Um, so I'll just leave it at that. I'm just not as high on them as you know most people are. Yeah, no, I, I I like your reasoning there. I still think it's a little high, but then you have Syracuse, the road the road trip to Syracuse. Um, you got the middle of the pack, right? Like this. So I think this is your sixth game. You're saying they're they're kind of average on our schedule. Um, Syracuse, think here. you're a little higher on them than me. I think I'm higher on Syracuse than most people. So Syracuse, if if Syracuse and Wake were playing, you know, the game day picks would probably be like 81% for Wake Forest right now. Um, you know, I, again, I like getting Wake Forest at home and traveling Syracuse, you know, the, the boring part of the state <laughs> um, that, that late in the season. Obviously, you're in a dome, so the elements aren't a major factor. Um, 
I just don't like going up there to that place. You know, I remember Willie's first year, the all the press that were complaining because remember that at that point they didn't even have air conditioning. It was like 90 right. degrees in the press box. It was um, called a carrier dome and they didn't have yeah, exactly it's ridiculous. Um, so yeah, it, and again, I'm not going to be mad at anybody who says flip those because I think you can, I just see it, the game itself for Florida state. I'd rather get wake at Doak than go up to Syracuse late in the season. You then have Florida here as um, so this will be your sixth toughest game. This game's at home. Obviously, we just talked about it on Friday night of Thanksgiving week. Um, I'll, I'll do both of these so you can see them. So Florida and then LSU. Correct. So I think Florida getting them at Doak, I, I think, you know, the, the rosters, you know, I think LSU probably has a slightly better roster. Um, first year for Billy Napier. I, I'm just not impressed so far. I, I We'll see what happens with AR-15. If he's able to make it to the end of the season, you know, he's kind of like Jordan Travis the way we discuss him, like we like him if he's healthy. Um, and LSU, I, I think the main reasoning I have this low in, in kind of the mid-tier games, it's just in the perfect spot in the schedule, right? They they don't have a warm-up game. You get a warm-up game. It's their first game, new offense, new defense, new everything. If LSU was, you know, if that game were in November or October, I'd probably have it as a little tougher because I do think they're going to end up being a really good team. Uh, you just catch them at the perfect time. So here's my middle four games. I've got BC here um, back at home as my, again, fifth easiest game. So a little little higher on them than Richie is. I kind of mentioned that. Djurkovic, Jay Flowers, we seem to let quarterbacks just absolutely light us up if they have a, a, a great target like that. And so hoping to be wrong there. But again, I, that's a game I think Florida State should win. That you know That's your fifth easiest game of the schedule. In fact, if you look back at mine, my – like I, I think we have to. Like I think there are five sure wins on the schedule, and it's these four and Boston College. So I've got them a little higher than Richie does, but still, that that's a must win. Next, I've got Florida. I've got I flipped Florida here on on this one, and I'll I'll talk about why on these two. Yeah, I like Wake a little bit more than Florida. I like how I think I like how we'll be playing at the end of the year. Ars trying kind of tr struggle with some injury issues and stuff, and I just think that Wake. With their quarterback, with Hartman, somebody mentioned it. You know, it feels like he's been there for about ten yeah. years. I just think their quarterback play is a little bit better now. Florida will be better in the trenches; they'll have better athletes. You get them a little later. You may get them kind of banged up. First year system, as opposed to Wake's, kind of got some guys that have been in it for a while. I think Wake's going to be slightly more difficult than Florida. I could flip those two and say like, ah, the rivalry game, and so that makes Florida a little bit tougher, but. I just don't think Florida is going to be very good this year. I could see Wake winning eight or so games. I think Florida is going to win six or seven. You know, I could see both of our teams going into that game at six and five, and the winner ends up getting to seven wins. So Florida, then Wake. Now I've got LSU for the same reasons you do, right? LSU is my fifth toughest game, which is kind of crazy. Like, I don't think that that's super, you know, I think that the things you mentioned, getting them at, at kind of a good time getting them early, us having the game to prepare for it, not having to go to Baton Rouge. I, you know, as much as I'd love to go to Baton Rouge as a fan to win this game, I'm, I'm happy that that game is in New Orleans. Um, it's kind of split split feelings there because, I, you know, I'd rather be in Baton Rouge, but I'd rather not play them in Baton yeah. Rouge. It's, so. it's probably worth three or four points being in the Dome yeah. as opposed to Baton Rouge. It, it may be even more because at that place at, at night, I've never been. I've had friends, they say, listen, I love Florida – I love going to Florida State. It's nothing like LSU at night I've, for a big yeah. game there. I've been to top five matchups at the Swamp. I've been to top three matchups at Doak. I've been to uh, – I went to Clemson Notre Dame when both those teams were ranked, and that game went to overtime. Um, I've been to some big stuff. I've been to neutral site stuff. I've been to – you know, which those are never as loud. Um, when I went to Alabama LSU in 2016, and that was a top ten matchup, it was the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard in my life. Like I, I literally felt the play like first drive of the game, Jalen hurts throws an interception from his own end zone and LSU has the ball in like their own 30 and they didn't even end up scoring there, but the place was like shaking. I was down in the end zone. So yeah, I'm thankful to not have to go to Baton Rouge as much as I'd love to go to Baton Rouge. I'm thankful to not have to go. Uh, okay. We were the same on our top five games. So not a lot of argument here. Um, we both picked LSU in that spot. But our top five games were, were, were or our top four games um, were all the same. Yeah, I think the Louisville game is tougher. I'll, we'll, we'll, we'll go back and forth on these, and I'll let you do the next one. I think the Louisville game is tougher. Um, I think having to go on the road on a Friday night is slightly tougher. 
against a team that returns Malik Cunningham. I think they're a little bit better at the quarterback position. We've shown some struggles with them in the past, uh, being able to contain him on the ground and through the air. I think that going on the road, a true road game on a Friday night against Louisville is slightly tougher than um, going and playing LSU in a neutral side game. I think if these two teams played each other, I think I'd lean LSU on like a neutral site, um, which is kind of crazy. I mean, they're fourth and fifth, so I don't think we're saying like, oh, one's eighth and one's first. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I think I'd probably lean LSU. But if LSU had to go play, like if we played LSU in Baton Rouge and Louisville at home, I would flip these. Like I'd have LSU is slightly tougher. So having to go on the road, I, I think that Louisville is is the slightly tougher game. That said, we're going to talk about schedules in in – Two weeks, I think. You got to split these two games to me. Because I think you beat Duquesne. I think you beat BC. So you're two and two at worst, right? Coming out of those first four games. If you can split these two games, if you can win either your fourth or your fifth most difficult game, and you can get to three and one to start that year, I think you go into that Wake Forest game, which would be the very next week, as a favorite. Um, and, and I think that would be huge to potentially get to four and one. I mean, that that's crazy. You got to split these two games to me. Louisville and LSU are going to be really, really big. Again, they're your fourth and fifth toughest games. You need to find a way to win one of them. Um, I'll let you do Miami. Miami on the road, our third toughest game of the year. Yeah, and uh, you know, obviously the the game was a dogfight last year. I think anytime we go down there, we all have our jokes for Miami's attendance, and they're well deserved. But when Florida State's there, it is a packed house, and it is an intimidating environment. You know, I remember Willie's first game. When um, but we had the big lead early when Francois got strip sacked, that place just went nuts. And just watching on the TV, you felt like everything turned that, that game had changed there. So it is a tough venue. I think they have, you know, probably the best quarterback in the ACC. Uh, they did lose a good bit, so we'll probably see what the best they quarterback have on our schedule. Yeah. So, so it, you know, that Miami, you know, we like to get our jokes off and have a good time. They should be a good team. And, and Crystal Ball, he's a, he's a solid coach. He's nothing special as far as X's and O's go. But I do think Miami has the better roster right now, mainly because you have to give them the edge at quarterback. And I'm a big fan of Jordan Travis, but Tyler Van, Vite, Van Dyke, you know, obviously will remember the spike forever, but that's going to be a tough game. And, and right now I probably have us losing it. In, in my opinion, the third toughest on the schedule. Yeah, I, I think you know this and the next two games are going to be incredibly difficult for Florida State to win. Not that it's impossible. This is the most likely, obviously, out of the three if we say it's the third toughest. But yeah. you know, Van Dyke had a really good year last year. I don't think he'll be as good this year, but he also like pretty much lost in the game last year. We were able to build up a Wait, pretty good started, lead because yeah. of his his three turnovers. And you know, if you're counting on a quarterback to come out and have three turnovers, that is something that kind of keeps you in a game or gives you a chance to win the game. Probably less likely than not that that they're going to be uh, one of your tougher games. I think going there is going to be slightly tougher than going to Louisville, but not impossible. I think this is a game that Florida State could win. I think Miami will be like a seven-ish point favorite, and you know we'll kind of see from there what ends up happening. Um, two games left. We agreed here. I was interested to see if you would maybe flip these because of location. I thought. About um, it. Did you think about it? Yeah, and uh, honestly, uh, show it since we're here, thinking yeah. uh, I just think Clemson that we're not going to be able to block Clemson at all. So uh, it, you know you're going to have to get some magic like we saw last year up there. Uh, but I definitely considered NC State because um, you know we're doing bold predictions here in a little bit. Here's here's the early one for you. I think the NC State game might be the biggest spread uh, um, we see uh, on the schedule when the time at the time the game is played. Um, but I picked Clemson because it's the week right after NC State. Um, and I think that, you know, Clemson, they have the best roster of the conference. It's not close. And, and if they can figure anything out at quarterback, they're instantly a playoff team, or at least a, certainly a contender for the playoff. Yeah. It didn't do us any favors giving us the uh, old NC State Clemson and back to back weeks. Yeah. Um, <coughs> a buy after that before Georgia Tech, um, which is helpful for that Georgia Tech game, but would have loved that buy before Clemson if, if possible. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I think. I mean, these are your toughest two games, and you could really flip flop them either way. Going to NC State's not going to be easy. Um, having Clemson come in is not going to be easy. I think Clemson will be a little bit better than they were last year. I think we'll be a little bit better than we were last year too. Like you know, so by no faults, but I think Clemson at their best versus us at our best. I, I think they're just a, they're just better. They just have yeah. more playmakers. They have more athletes. I thought the defense. I mean, as much as you know, Florida State fans want to get on our defense and talk down on our defense and this, that, and the other. 
I, I thought Florida State's defense against them last year was was actually pr- pretty good. Um, what we what we hold them to like what was the final score of the game? Twenty to twenty to thirty, but. I mean, yeah. the most ridiculous we, yeah. way to give up 30 points ever. So we held them to like, what, 17, 16 points before yep. the last three minutes of the game, you know? And I so I, I think that's pretty impressive. So I don't know if our defense will hold them that well again this year. I don't know if our offense, you know, you'd hope that offense can can score a little bit more than whatever we had, you know, 13 points minus the Jermaine Johnson thing. So, yeah, I, I think that that's going to be the tough one. You know, NC State, though, like I don't know – if they're going to be as good, I mean, I thought we played NC State really, really well last year and without Jordan Travis. And yeah. so I just think going on the road to Raleigh is really, really difficult. But I could see us, I can, I can see a path where we upset NC State, keep it really close, find a way to work some magic in the end and go from there, right? Jordan has a good game. He's healthy. He's there. Clemson, I don't really see a path for us to beat Clemson unless things get really, really crazy, which football is crazy. Like things like that happen. So, I'll, um, I'll just say this year, you know, last year when we were, were doing a show like this, we gave ourselves zero chance to beat Clemson, pretty much zero chance to beat Florida, very unlikely chance to beat Miami. Um, and then the season happened, and I think we were pleasantly surprised. Obviously, you want to get more wins uh, when you're playing that many close games. But there's no game on the schedule I look at and say, eh, that's an auto loss. And right. that's that's not been the case uh, the past few years. There's been games you looked at and said, why are we even going to play this game? Uh, Clemson is, it, it's still a, probably, a, you know, 80, 20, they win the game, but it's not, I'm not worried about seeing a 28 point spread when, when the game week comes, which we saw a few years ago. Yeah, no, no doubt about it. Need some more toe Philly magic. So we would definitely take that. All right. Do us a favor, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. If you haven't already swipe down in the chat, if you're on your mobile and hit that subscribe button, smash the like button. If you really love us, hit the share button. That'd be really cool if you sent that over to your social medias, but uh, we'll take likes and subscribes as well. Um, all right, last thing I have, Richie, before we get out of here, um, that's fun. We'll, we'll clip that up and we'll we'll put that out as its own little video. Some bold predictions. I've got a few. How many you got? How many do you have before we get going? I, I got one for offense and one for defense for you. All right, I got three, so I'll, I'll go first. That way we can rotate and it'll work out fine. Uh, yeah, I got Jordan. Tra- hopefully we didn't share these beforehand, so hopefully we don't have the same thing here. Um, I got Jordan Travis starting all 12 games. That's my bold predict. Like he starts all now. I'm not gonna say he never gets banged up, never misses yeah, a series, yeah. plays every down, anything crazy like that. I think Jordan Travis has grown and matured as a quarterback to know when he can and can't take hits. I think that the offensive line has improved to protect him better. And I think that the schedule helps Florida State a ton this year. You get Duquesne week zero, should not get banged up against Duquesne, right? Like injuries, freak things happen. Kid goes down with a season ending injury. Like you just, some things are unpreventable, but shouldn't get banged up against Duquesne. Then you've got eight days off to prepare for LSU because that's the Sunday game, right? Um, If you can get out of that unscathed, you have two weeks to prepare for Louisville because you get a bye week. Don't expect him to get banged up against Louisville. Don't expect Wake to be a super physical team. So I think he gets through the first or BC of super physical team or Wake. I think that if he does get banged up, it's likely against NC State or Clemson. You get a buy after that. And I think the schedule gets considerably easier when you have Georgia Tech, Syracuse, Miami's the tough one, uh, and then Louisiana and, and Florida there. So I think the schedule sets up really, really well. I think that he's smarter, more mature. The offensive line's better. I like Jordan Travis to start all 12 games. 13, put me down for a bowl. He's starting that one too. Yeah, and, and if he does start all 12 games, that's, I think, really good news for Florida State's season, right? Because, it, like you mentioned, it, you know, and granted, just missing a series or two could be the difference in a game. We saw that against Florida. But if you're telling me I'm going to have him starting all 12 games, that, that means he uh, avoids significant injury throughout the entire year. He doesn't miss any, uh, you know, extended period of time. So I'm definitely, uh, I would love if that comes to uh, to fruition because that that's great news for Florida State. Um, on the offensive side, I'll say that I think Johnny Wilson is going to lead the team in touchdown receptions this year. Um, they've been getting a lot of work with him, uh, you know, a lot of fade routes. I just think in the red zone, it, he's going to, I could see Mike Norvell falling in love with him, kind of like Jeff Bowden did with Greg Carr, right? When Greg Carr was here and we were in the red zone, that you almost always knew it was going to be a jump ball to him. Uh, I think if he can be a little more consistent in practice, he's going to be on the field even more. I just think he's such a big target. 
great body control. Uh, and I, I think he's going to lead us in touchdowns, not yards receptions, but definitely touchdowns. I like that. That's interesting. All right. So I've got Trey Benson going for a thousand yards. I, that's not maybe even that bold because you're running back one, but I think he's going to rip off a couple of those massive runs that really helped um, Corbin last year. Those 75, 80 yarders, you know, where you just hit two of those and then you're half, you know, you're a fifth of the way there. I think he's going to get the most touches. I really like what he's done in camp um, so far. I know it's early, but even with the three headed monster, even with Jordan Travis uh, running the ball a lot, I like Benson to go for a thousand yards. Give me Benson for 200 in the opener because I think we are going to pound the MF rock. And that's also going to help him get there. If you start out with 200, then I think you you have 11 games to get 800 more um, plus a bowl. So, yeah, give me Benson 1K. Coming off the injury a couple of years ago, uh, everybody doubted the take. This is going to be a chance for Mike Norvell and staff to say, we told you so. Talk about a pleasant surprise, right? Because when he was here on his recruiting trip, he was still in a brace or a boot, I believe. And everyone's like, is this kid even going to be available for the season? Then uh, spring ball comes and he's – Full go from day one. Probably one of the most consistent and impressive spring camps. I'm I'm excited for Benson. Uh, it would not surprise me. Um, you like that but one? You, got, you, you gotta like think. It, well, you gotta think. I mean, it, two long runs in the opener could get you. You know, tw- <laughs> could get you a good bit there. Uh, and the, like you mentioned, I, I think he actually benefits from having Jordan Travis because it's you know the defenses have to account for Jordan Travis on those options, and it, so essentially one less person going after him. So I, I'm. I'm okay with that one. I, I, I don't know if I'd say he's going to get to a thousand, but I definitely think he'll be the leading rusher for the team this year with Trey Sean uh, just a little bit behind him. Well, you're an absolute hater if you don't have him in a thousand. So uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. What, what's Fake your fan, uh, right? <laughs> <laughs> what's your defensive one? So defense, I, I think the defense is going to be the strength of this team. Um, I was going to say top 15, but I'll say I think they finished the season with a top 20 defense in the S&P Plus. So, you know, we're not I'm not going to look at, you know, average yards per game or scoring defense. S&P Plus kind of puts all of that in there together, adjust for strength of schedule. And if they have a top 20 defense, I, I think you're looking at eight wins and, you know, you get a lucky bounce here or there. Who knows what could happen? So I, I do think the defense will be the strength of this team. Uh, and, uh, you know, Adam Fuller, I think, is going to put a, a lot of people uh, – have a lot of people second-guessing their initial thoughts on him right now heading into the season. I like it. I like it. Um, my, I, I actually got some really good ones of these on Twitter, and I know that we're a little over an hour, so thanks, guys, for sticking with us. Um, but I, I actually want to read some of, the, some of the ones we got off Twitter because I thought they were really good. If you have them here in the chat, I'll read some of yours too. Um, but, uh, yeah, let me uh, – Let me scroll back to where we had him on Twitter so that I can, uh, so that I can read some of those off. Okay, cool. Here, uh, here's my third one and I'm going to share something real quick. I cut this out and and had a little bit of fun with it, but, uh, yeah, I, I like Kevin Knowles to get three interceptions. Like that's my, uh, that's, that's my big one here. Um, I think the turnovers that our team is going to get over the next over the year um are going to go way up i think our leader last year i think jamie had four if i remember correctly and then nobody else even had like you know they just had like a couple like it nothing was crazy but Knowles has made some plays i like him in that nickel spot i think we get three picks there um out of kevin Knowles. so this picture was actually really really cool i cut out the bodies and then put them on top of another picture just so you could kind of like emphasize it. But yeah, give me that. Give me Kevin Knowles with three picks. It's kind of a really, really specific one, but I like him in the nickel. I like us to take away a lot of stuff. And so that's one that I, I feel good about. Um, some in the chat, uh, Cameron McDonald catches, matches and sur- surpasses his career uh, total yards. Uh, I don't have his career numbers like right here in front of me. Um, but I don't think that that would shock me. All right. Uh, so we total, total stats for his career. Um, yeah. Career receiving statistics, 549 yards. That would be massive if he went over. Five, yeah. So you're saying 550 or more. Um, he's had 549 yards. The most he ever had in a year was 2020, 2021, where he had 263 only played in nine games that year. So yeah, if he goes for 550, that would be huge uh, for Florida State. 
over under three pick six for the season. Uh, I'll go with a push there. Uh, pick sixes are really, really yeah, tough. I'll, I'll go under on that one. I'll go push just to make myself feel good. Uh, but I like that. Uh, one punt or kickoff return for a touchdown. I like that one. I think that's a fun one that I don't necessarily disagree with. I think that's fun. Um, here's some fun ones. Twitter, Ed Kennedy says uh, he thinks we'll beat LSU. Um, I, I am excited to talk about that LSU game as we get closer. I'm not trying to overlook Duquesne, but that yeah, that's that's going to be a fun one. Donald Heaven Jr., who played for Florida State on the national championship team in 1999, says that Jordan Travels will go for 3,500 yards, total pass and rush, plus 30 touchdowns. So I think your, your key to getting there would be something like 2,800 passing and 700 rushing or, you know, or 800, you know, 28 and 700. Yeah. Or something like that. Like it counts for 30 touchdowns. Then. 30 <laughs> touchdowns that's, that's would, an explosive offense would be massive. Yeah. So I'm, I'm all about that. 10 wins, a thousand yard back and JT makes it through the season without missing a game from Hunter. That's a good one. Beat LSU and UF. I don't even know if that one's too bold. I, you know, no. I think you're going to be a favorite against UF and a three point dog to LSU. So I don't, I don't even think that that one's crazy bold, but I like the prediction. That commenter also said that we would lose um, to NC State and Louisville. Kenneth True says he likes Winston Wright and McLean to break out offensively. And then we see a transformed Derek McClendon, which Florida State fans would certainly like that and not complain there at all. Um, I'll say, I'll on, say on that note that uh, I, I think McLean is going to be your leading receiver um, in receptions and yards. I, I think – He's had a really good start to the camp. I just think he has so much untapped potential. He can be a really, really good receiver. So I, I add me to uh, add that one to me. Uh, McLean leads the team in receptions and yards this season. Yeah, I like it. Um, and then Panama Null said we go nine and three. I think that's bold. I think that would be yeah. a really, really big one. I think that eight and four is kind of my my ceiling right now. But I, I think that nine and three would be. Super, super impressive. I guess I actually got a couple off of Instagram too. So let me uh, two and zero versus the SEC. We'll get to eight wins in a decent bowl game. Um, a New Year's Six bowl that'd be huge. We go undefeated on the home at home and on the road. Uh, somebody said seven and five. I said I feel like that's not very bold because we <laughs> predicted to go six point five over under. So um, anyway, I think that's fun. I think those are good ones. So we'll see if any of those come true. Honestly, I'm not tracking all of you guys. You can track your own, but I'll see if mine and Richie's come true. I will remember those. So, um, oh man, Bill Russell just passed away. So that's kind of sad. Nothing like ending on a, oh. on a sad note. But yeah, obviously one of the legends to ever play, uh, Bill Russell. Um, man, that stinks. Um, all right, if you watch this, if you listen to this, sorry to go out with bad news. Um, hit the subscribe button, hit that like button. If you listen to us on iTunes, which we've noticed the numbers go up there a ton as we get closer and closer to the season, do us a favor and hit that share button, rate us five stars, review all those things. Just type in go Knowles and hit a five-star review. If you listen on iTunes, if you don't listen on iTunes and you guys were in here hanging out with us today, go to iTunes, search double fries, no slaw, <laughs> hit the subscribe button. You don't have to listen to it twice. Hit the subscribe button, rate five stars, do all those things. We really appreciate it. Again, if you're in here in the chat or you're watching later, smash the subscribe button. Uh, if you're a poor and have an Android, uh, Harlan tells me that Spotify has rankings too. So if you listen on Spotify instead of Apple, sorry that I just offended, you know, like 10% of you that do have Androids, you can leave ratings there too. You can cuss me out on the rank ratings. Just leave it as a five star. Like the, the words can be screw TJ for making fun of my Android, but give us five stars on the rating. Like I'm, I'm all about that. Uh, Richie, do you have any shout outs? But, but honestly, though, it, the show is 100 times better when there's a bunch of people in the chat commenting and um, interacting. We really, really appreciate that. It, it makes it flow better. It makes it a ton of fun to interact with you guys during the show. Um, so keep that up. We, we, we're we going to try and keep it pretty consistent at noon. Uh, next Sunday is probably going to be a PM showing. Um, but we, we really do appreciate interacting with you guys. So, Rich, you got any shout outs before we get out of here? Yeah, just to echo what you said, shout out the listeners. You can tell the season is closer because each week we get more and more comments flooding and flooding the show, which we love the interaction. So guys, keep it up. Like TJ said, we'll try and be consistent. Uh, before you know it, we'll be back to two shows a week, every Sunday Woo! and Thursday. Uh, let's go. Yeah, I'm with it. If you Again, if you're in the Tampa area, if you're a, a Tampa Bay Seminole, come on out to the pub crawl, come out to Carmine's. We'll see you this weekend. 
you want to place the tailgate for the LSU game or the Duquesne game, hit my DMs, hit the show's DMs, messages here on YouTube. It doesn't matter. Get a hold of us, and we will certainly enjoy hanging out for both of those games. And this weekend in Tampa, when we go to Carmine's and do a live show. Uh, Seminole Legend might be there that we might be interviewing. So I'll get some confirmation on that. We'll make official announcements as the week gets going. Mike, always appreciate you. 9-3 and three to finish the regular season, 10-3 and three to close it out. That's what we did in the uh, NCAA uh, 14 uh, streaming. So if you want to go back and watch those, you can see us go nine and three. Let's get after it guys this week. Uh, check us out on Twitter. Uh, I think it's R underscore Barnes for So you need an easier handle. Um, R underscore Barnes 407 TJ underscore Pittenger. We may end up doing a spaces later today. So check us out. I'll see if I can get Richie out of bed or off the IPAs to do one with me. But uh, thank you guys for hanging out. We'll see you next time. No pop-ups this week, I don't think. We'll see, though. Go Knowles.